here we go video number two um, I was waiting for enough time to pass that I had more experience with the GPD win um, in order to tell you just some more useful things about it to start off with uh, I'm looking at it through the HoloLens last time I viewed it through the phone but I wanted my little buddy twitch here to be able to uh, get in on the action anyway we're gonna look at a couple of things in this video um, we're going to look at how well it does with Adobe Premiere and I actually edited a small project on here it's uh, it's a little end card for this video so I'm gonna show you that uh, we're gonna look at blender we're gonna load a model in blender and look at the cycles rendering engine and then there were some things in the comments such as using it on a train and stuff like that and I'm gonna address that so first up let's look at Premiere over here in Premiere I've got about a, a 10 or not 10 um, one minute video I have a one minute video here in Premiere, a little over a minute. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five video tracks, six video tracks actually, and one audio track. Video tracks uh, include just a still graphic and a titling effect. The titling effect has some, some glow and drop shadow on it. I just kind of threw some things at it that you might generally want to see. Uh, the video, the little end card video is uh, 1080p. Um, here's how responsive it is. Again, I'm using my iPad Pro as the screen via Duet display. So this is all running off the GPD win. Um, let me just hit play on this real quick. All right, folks, time for the end card pitch. Okay, yeah. And, and of course, right there it locked up. I probably have a lot going on. Um, it was kind of cumbersome to edit on here, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I actually got the job done reasonably well and you can see all the different clips down in here um, and yeah I've used I've used various effects on them scrubbing up and down the timeline it it all works pretty well the whole um, minute plus video took about six seven minutes to export at the YouTube HD uh, 1080p quality setting um, if there's anything else you might want to know about it feel free to ask and I can leave a comment about it next thing I wanted to point out is um, in the last video, I talked about how Duet Display allowed use of the pencil and all of that in both Windows and Mac, uh, but I had a calibration issue. I actually didn't do anything about that calibration issue, but since I last filmed this video, Duet Display had an amazing update, um, and it just works. So pressure sensitivity and all of that, it just works. Now there is a bit of lag, but that lag may not actually be duet display. Somebody brought up in the comments that I'm actually running a USB 2.0 and not 3.0. That's true, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch is capable of USB 3.0, but the cable only uh, is 2.0. Now I've heard that with the iPad Pro camera adapter, you can get the USB 3.0 Pro, uh, uh, speeds out of it. So I may experiment with that a little bit. But for the most part, I mean, it works really well. And in addition to the update in Duet Display, the better pencil support, you'll remember in the last video, I looked at this guy. It's a great keyboard, but it's another keyboard I have to carry. I was just thinking this when Duet Display updated. What if I could use the Apple Smart Keyboard in Duet Display? Uh, you can in the latest update, so I don't even need to take this anymore. The Apple Smart Keyboard works uh, with Duet Display on the GPD Win, so the whole thing's being controlled here. Pencil is stylus functionality, little mouse, keyboard, it, it, it's actually pretty good. My hardware issues still stand, I wish it was more powerful, but just testing this out as an actual real-world work device, like there's a lot of potential um, in this area. Okay, so now we're going to take a moment to look at Blender 3D, but um, kind of before we do that, I'm going to be pulling a model off of my HoloLens, and in case we're not familiar with HoloLens real quick, I kind of want to show you what it's about. Okay, so I've detached the GPD win from all that uh, Michigath over there, um, and I'm using it more like as a remote console f or a terminal, I guess you could say, for the HoloLens to kind of show you this app now. And it also shows one of the benefits of the GPD win. Um, first up with HoloLens for the uninitiated, uh, the computer is actually self-contained in the HoloLens. So the GPU isn't processing, or the GPD win isn't processing any of this. 
Um, it's more just a web console for interfacing with it. So I'm using it to hit record and, and, and uh, download the OB, the mesh that it's building and all of that. Anyway, here's a little kind of prototype I had been working on. Hover. That's the command to take off. Follow. All right, that allows it to kind of follow the gaze. Ooh, I got an idea for a money shot. Hover. Look at that. Look at that, right? Oh, I can't help it. All right, here we go. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na -na -na. No, no? Okay. Well, here we go. Custom thumbnail, right? Custom thumbnail for this YouTube video is that shot right there. Oh, yeah, here, check this out, right? Again, if this is all new to you, here's that 3D mesh that's been um, building as I've been walking around the room. And this is the 3D mesh that we're going to be pulling off. So what it's doing right now is that sphere, that kind of green projection, is the HoloLens unit and the direction the camera is moving. So like, you'll see if I move it around, it's all the sensors and whatnot. So right down here, if I click this little update button, it's going to update and construct the 3D model that it's been building for the room. And if I drag that around, you can kind of see it better. So you can see there's my display toy shelf above my desk where the work actually gets done, the couch, the dog right in there. Um, okay, and then down here, you have an option to save. So we're gonna click that. It's going to save it. It's about a five megabyte file, roughly five megabytes, something like that. All right, now that it's saved, Jump over here to Blender, and we'll just see how smooth all of this is. I'm going to go to Import. Okay, there it is. And uh, yeah, the meshes it built, obviously they're not pretty meshes. Um, that's okay, because it's not building them for visual purposes. It's building them to um, for collision data and that sort of thing. Okay, there, that's better. We're inside this mangly mesh. Um, ah, there we go. So if I rotate around, kind of, you can start getting some perspective. You're looking at my chair, my desk, and the toy shelf above it, video game racks off to the side, and, you know, all that stuff that I like to say is necessary to productivity. Well, let's use cycles. See what happens. Oh, my. All right, that's a cycles material view. Can I still move around? Oh, it's, uh, it's still loading. Little spinny guy, it's still spinning. Other programs are still responsive. Uh, let's check the audio. Scrubbing up and down. Yeah, everything's still responsive. It's just Blender itself um, does not care for this. I would say you're not going to be using the cycles rendering on here. Even if we're just waiting for it, you can't wait this long and be productive for just a material view change. Um, in the normal Blender view, you can be plenty productive on a low quality model, and in cycles will even work on lower things. I think this is just too complex of a scene. All right, so let's just start with a cube now, right? So the cube, everything's nice and smooth. We're on the Blender render. Let's jump to the cycles render. Um, see, I can still move around and all of that, but that's a far less complex shape. If I go down here, and uh, it's currently on solid, and if I go to a rendered view, um, there's a rendered cycles view, and you can see that it actually does work. So I'm thinking if you're working on low poly models, uh, work in normal Blender renderer, and you could actually use cycles to get some decent, you know, renders of your of your individual models, but that mesh I loaded for the room data, um, regardless of whether or not that was actually going to work, it was just taking too long to get anything done. Somebody had asked about on the train, and here's the only thing I'm going to say on the train. Like, that's a really good idea. This keyboard is not backlit, and it looks great in the light, but I have used it in uh, dark or dim light settings, and I cannot at all see the keys. And while there's little nubs so you can feel when you're kind of like on the home rows. They're not that pronounced. It's easy to get lost. And I find that in dim lit environments, I actually have to tilt the screen down to see the keys I need. Um, of course, this is a touch screen. So you could also just bring up the on-screen keyboard. But it's, it's in dim and low light to no light settings that keyboard's almost entirely useless. Um, 
So, depending on the train you're riding, that could be an issue for you. There was some interest in the accessories that I had in the accessory pouch. Some people asked about the mouse and the keyboard. There are actually a couple things in here that are cooler than that that I thought you might want to know about. The Hutu HTTM01. Why is this external battery so stinking cool? Because this is also a wireless N router. I think a wireless N150, not the 300, but still. That's really cool because you have like anywhere you go Wi-Fi. That has been very useful. Um, I was at a convention not long ago called ZapCon where I was demoing HoloLens and I had to stream it to a projector. Their Wi-Fi, for security policy reasons, would not allow my um, HoloLens to connect to my uh, to my laptop and we didn't have time to figure that out. We had five minutes till we presented so I popped this thing out, did my own on-the-fly Wi-Fi network and was completely independent of the infrastructure of that convention. Fantastic for being an external battery. Uh, also has an RJ45 jack so you can plug your laptop into it and share internet um, from an internet enabled device onto whatever connects to this via Wi-Fi. It also has a USB port, USB 2.0, so you could plug a USB thumb drive in there and it acts as a NAS. So if you got one of those really tiny ones that are like 256 gigabytes, you could just leave it plugged in, leave this in your pocket, turn that on, and bam, you got wireless storage. So that's a really cool accessory that's actually been very, very useful for on-the-go presentations and things like that. Um, okay, covered it. The train thing... The wireless battery, HoloLens, Premiere Pro, you saw how productive I could be. Alrighty folks, time for the end card elevator pitch. Tom Clancy's Narnia. Does that idea do anything for you? If it does, you probably are going to like the game that I'm working on. Um, so I encourage you to check it out. There's these other little video clips floating around in here. I haven't figured out where I'm putting them yet, so I can't exactly point at them. But um, if you check them out, you can see gameplay footage of my prototype. There's some stuff where I talk about programming. I'm doing some AR and HoloLens things. Uh, I actively work during the summer. That's the thing. I teach during the school year, so my prime development time is during the summer. So I encourage you to uh, like me on Facebook and subscribe here on YouTube. If you do those things, then you'll become aware when I start developing again. Because if you like this kind of thing... Uh, I would love for you to stick around this summer as I kind of go over my development process and I can even include you guys on some play tests. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you around the interwebs there.